We saw in previous videos how easy it is to crack WEP encrypted networks even if there was no devices connected to the target network and even if the target network was idle. We also explained a number of methods to inject packets into the traffic and cause the number of data to increase very rapidly so that we can crack the WEP key uh, in a very short period of time. Now in the next few tutorials we're, we're gonna talk about WPA encryption. Uh, this encryption was designed after WEP and it was designed to address all the issues that made WEP so easy to crack. The main issue with WEP was the short initialization vector which is sent as plain text in each packet. The short initializi initialization vector meant that the possibilities of having a unique IV in each packet can be exhausted in active networks. So when we were injecting packets or in natural active networks, uh, we will have more than two packets that have the same IV. When this happens, Aircrack NG can use statistical attacks to determine the key stream and then determine the WEP key. In WPA, however, uh, each packet is encrypted using a unique temporary key. This means that the number of data packets that we collect is irrelevant. Even if we were able to collect 1 million packets, these packets are not useful because they do not contain any information that can help us crack the WPA key. Now I'm talking about WPA, but it's the sa WPA2 is the same, it works by the same method, and uh, it can be cracked using the same methods. The only difference between WPA and WPA2 is that WPA2 uses an algorithm called TCMP for encryption. Click here for the next video and click here for the previous video or go to description for the video link. A link was provided in the description below for all of my other videos on cracking Wi-Fi passwords. Please like this video and thank you for watching.